to be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them to die to sleep no more and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. To sleep perchance to dream. Aye. There's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The Proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes. When he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin, who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveller returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied all with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pith and moment. With this Regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. <laughs> 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 Though yet of Hamlet our dear brother's death the memory be green, and that it us befitted to bear our hearts in grief and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe, yet so far hath discretion fought with nature that we, with wisest sorrow, think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. <laughs> Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, <laughs> Have we, as twere, with a defeated joy, with mirth in funeral and with dirge in marriage, in equal scale, weighing both delight and dole, taken to wife? <laughs> Nor have we herein barred your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair along. For all, our thanks. Now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some suit. What wouldst thou have, Laertes? My dread lord, your leave and favor to return to France. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? 
He hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave by laborsome petition, <laughs> and, and at last, upon his will, I sealed my hard consent. I do beseech you, give him leave to go. Thy fair hour, Laertes, time be thine, and my best graces spend it at thy will. <laughs> <laughs> but now, my cousin Hamlet and my son, a little more than kin and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Oh, not so, my lord. I am too much of the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy knighted color off and let thine eyes look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowst tis common. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Ay, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam. Nay, it is. I know not. Seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, together with all forms, moods, shapes of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem for their actions that a man might play, but I have within, which passeth show, these but the trappings and the suits of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in thy nature, Hamlet, to give these mourning duties to your father, but you must know your father lost a father, that father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. Mm. To persevere in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. It shows a will most incorrect to heaven, an understanding simple and unschooled. We pray you. Throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think on us as of a father. For let the world take note. You are the most immediate to our throne, and with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears his son, do I impart toward you. <laughs> For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire, and we do beseech you, bend you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye. Our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, mother. Why, tis a loving and a fair reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. Come, madam. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling on my heart. <laughs> Come, away. <laughs> that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew, or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. God, God, how weary, Dale, flat, and unprofitable to me seem all the uses of this world. Fie, fie upon that it should come to this, but two months dead, nay, not so much, not two. So excellent a king, so loving to my mother that he might not beteem the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must I remember why she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And yet within a month, a little month, why she, even she of God, a beast that wants discourse of reason, would have mourned longer married with my uncle, my father's brother. 
<laughs> Most wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good, but break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship! I am glad to see thee well! What make you from Wittenberg, Horatio? Marcellus? My good lord. I am very glad to see you, Goodian, sir. But what is your affair in Elsinore? My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I prithee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. My father, methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw who? My lord, the king. Your father. The king, my father! Season your admiration for a while with an attent ear, till I may deliver upon the witness of these two gentlemen this marvel to well, For you. God's love, let me hear! Two nights together had these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch been thus encountered. A figure like your father appears before them, armed, and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. This to me in dreadful secrecy in part they did, and I with them on the third night kept the watch. The apparition comes... But where was this? My lord, upon the platform where we watched. Should not you speak to it? Aye, my lord, but answer made it none. Tis very strange. As I do live, my honored lord, tis true. And we did think it writ down in our duty to let you know of it. Oh, indeed. Indeed, sirs. But this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. We, we do, do, my lord. lord. Armed, say you. Armed, my lord. From top to toe. My lord, from head to foot. Then saw you not his face. Oh, yes, my lord. He wore his visor up. And fixed his eyes upon you. Most constantly. I would I had been there. It would have much amazed you. I will watch tonight. Perchance, it will walk again. I warrant it will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray you all, if you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be tenable in your silence still. And whatsoever else shall happen tonight, give it an understanding, but no tongue. I will requite your loves. So fare ye well. Upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Our, Our duty, duty to your honor. honor. Your loves, as mine to you. Farewell. Is not well, I guess some foul play would that night will come. Till then, sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth overwhelm them to men's eyes. My necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And sister, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. Oh, do you doubt that? For Hamlet, and the trifling of his favor, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, a violet in the youth of primy nature, no more. No more but so? Think it no more. Look, perhaps he loves you now, but you must fear his greatness. Wade, his will is not his own. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself, for on his choice depends the safety and health of this whole state. Then weigh what loss your honor may sustain if you, with... Too credent ear, list his songs, or lose your heart, or your chaste treasure ope to his unmastered importunity. Ooh. Oh, I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But good my brother, do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst like a puffed and reckless libertine himself, the primrose path of dalliance treads and wrecks not his own fate. Oh, fear me not. I stay too long. Oh, here my father comes. <laughs> oh, yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard, for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail. You are stayed for. 
Oh, yeah. My blessing with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory look thou character. <clears throat> Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but do not dull thy palm with the entertainment of each new-hatched, unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance to a quarrel. Uh, but being in, bear it that the opposed may beware of thee. <laughs> oh! Neither a borrower nor a lender be. For loan oft loses both itself and friend, and uh, borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. <coughs> oh, oh. And this, above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as the night the day, or canst then not be false to any man. Farewell. My blessing season this in thee. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. <laughs> oh, go, your servants tend. <laughs> Farewell, sister. Remember well what I have said to you. Tis in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. <laughs> Farewell, father. Um, what is it, Ophelia, that he hath said to you? So please you something touching the Lord Hamlet? Oh, Mary, well be thought. Tis told me that he hath very oft of late given private time to you, and you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my Lord, of late made many tenders of his affection to oh, me. Oh, affection? Oh, you speak like a green girl. Do you believe these tenders, as you call them? I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Oh, Mary, I'll teach you. Think yourself a baby. That he hath given you these tenders, that, 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 that if you tame them for true currency, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly, or you'll tender me a fool. My lord, he hath importuned me with love in honorable fashion. Ah, fashion, you may call it. Okay, go to, go to. And giving countenance to his speech, my lord, with almost all the holy vows of heaven. Springes to catch woodcocks. I do know how when the, the blood burns, the, the tongue is lent prodigal vows by the soul. Yeah. From this time, be somewhat scanter of your maiden presence. <laughs> I would not, from this time forth, in plain terms, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet? Do this, I pray you. Come your ways. <clears throat> I shall obey, my lord. The air bites shrewdly. It is very cold. Tis a nipping and eager air. What hour now? Uh, I think it lacks of twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed? I heard it not. Oh, then it draws near the season wherein the spirit held is wont to walk. What does this mean, my lord? The king doth wake tonight and takes his rouse, and as he drains his draughts of Rhenish down, the kettle drum and trumpet. Look, my lord, it comes. Angels and ministers of grace, defend us. Be thou a spirit of health, a goblin damned. Be thy intent wicked, a charitable. Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee and call thee Hamlet, king. Father, royal dame, what may this mean that thou, dead corpse, revisits us our soul? Say, 
Why is this? Where for? What should we do? It beckons you to come with it, as if it's some important to desire to you alone. It waves you to a more remote ground, but do not go with it. No, by no means. It will not speak, then I will follow it. Do not, my lord. Why, what would be the fear? It waves me still. Go on, I'll follow thee. You shall not go, my lord. Hold up your hands. Be ruled, you shall not go. My fate cries out. Still am I called on heavenly ah! gentlemen. By heaven I will make a ghost of him that stops me. I say away. Go on. I'll follow thee. He waxes desperate with imagination. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Let's follow him. Well, let that lead me. Speak, I'll go no further. Mark me. I will. Now is the hour for I to sulfurous and tormenting flames must render up myself. Alas, poor ghost. Pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak, I am bound to hear. As thou art to revenge when thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast and fire till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and oh. purged away. List, list, oh list, if thou Discover thy dear father love. Oh God! Revenge is foul and most unnatural murder. Murder! Murder most foul, strange and unnatural. I haste me to know it. Now Hamlet here. Twas given out that sleeping in my orchard a serpent stung me. But know thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle! I, that incestuous and adulterous beast, with the witchcraft of his wit, one to his shameful lust, the will of my most Seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there. But soft, methinks I sent the morning air. Brief let me be. My custom always of the afternoon, sleeping in my orchard. Thy uncle stole with juice of cursed ebony, and in the porches of my ear did pour the leprous distillment whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man. Thus was I sleeping by a brother's hand of life. Of brow, of queen, at once despair. Oh God! A oh, horrible, horrible, most horrible. Oh. If thou has nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But whomsoever thou pursues this act. Take not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Fare thee well at once. Thank you. Yes, by heaven. Oh, most pernicious woman. 
Oh, villain! Villain! Smiling! Damn it! Villain! It is adieu. Adieu. Remember me? I have sworn! My lord! My lord! Lord, lord heaven! Uh, heaven secure him! So be it. How is my noble lord? What news, my lord? Oh, wonderful. Good, my lord, tell it. No, you'll reveal it. <laughs> Not by heaven, my lord. Not I, my lord. And now, good friends, as you are friends, Scholars and soldiers, give me one poor request. What is it, my lord? We will. Never make known what you have seen tonight. We, we will, will not, my lord. lord. Nay, but swear it. In faith, my lord, not I. Nor I, my lord, in faith. Upon my sword. But my lord, we have sworn already. Indeed, upon my sword, indeed. Whee! Come on. You hear the fellow in the cellar late? Consent to swear. Propose the oath, my lord. Never to speak of this that you have seen. Swear by my sword! Yeah. Oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. There is more in heaven and earth, Horatio, than is dreamt of in our philosophy. Nay. But here, as before, never so help you mercy. How strange or awesome I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think me to put an antic disposition on, that you at such time seeing me never shall note that you know aught of me. This do swear! Rest. Rest, perturbed spirit. So, gentlemen, let us go in together. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite that ever I was born to set it right. Ophelia, what's the matter? Oh, my lord. My lord, I have been so affrighted. Oh, of what in the name of God? My lord, as I was sewing in my closet, Lord Hamlet, with his doublet all unbraced, pale as his shirt, knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous in purport as though he had been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors, he comes before me. Mad for thy love. My lord, I do not know, but truly I do fear it. What said he? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to all the length of his arm, and with his other hand thus o'er his brow he falls. To such perusal of my face as he would draw it. Come, go we to the king. This is the very ecstasy of love. Oh, wait. Have you given him any hard words of late? No, my lord. But as you did command, I did deny his letters and denied his access to me. And that hath made him mad. Oh, I, 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 I am sorry that I had not, with better heed and judgment, quoted him. Come, go we to the king. Dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, moreover much that we did long to see you, the need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation? What it can be more than his father's death that puts him so far from the understanding of himself, I cannot dream of. I do beseech you both that being of so young days brought up with him, 
that you vouchsafe your rest here in our court to draw him on to pleasures, and to gather so much as from occasion you may glean, whether aught in us unknown afflicts him thus, that opened lies within our remedy. Good gentlemen, he hath much talked of you, and sure I am to men there are not living to whom he more adheres. <laughs> if it would please you to expend your stay with us a while, you shall receive such thanks as fits a king's remembrance. <laughs> Uh, both your majesties, might by the sovereign power you have of us put your dread pleasures more into command than to entreaty? But we both obey and lay our service freely at your feet to be commanded. <laughs> thanks, Rosencrantz, and gentle Guildenstern. Uh, thanks, Guildenstern and gentle Rosencrantz. And I do beseech you instantly to, to visit my too much changed son. Heavens make our presence and our practices Pleasant and helpful to him. Hi, hi, ah, dear. Amen. <laughs> My lord, I do believe that I have found the cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. That do I long to hear. I doubt it is no other but the main, his father's death and our o'er hasty marriage. Oh, my liege and madam, mm. to expostulate what majesty should be, what duty is, why day is day, night night, why time is time, we're nothing but to waste night, day, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, I will be brief. Oh, your noble son is mad. I, I, <laughs> mad call I it, for to define true madness, what is it but to be othering nothing else but mad? Okay, let that go. Uh, more matter with um, less art. Oh, madam, I swear I use no art at all. Uh. <laughs> uh, that, that, he is tr that he is mad, tis true. Mm -hmm. Tis true, tis pity, and pity tis tis true, a foolish figure. Oh, but farewell it, for I will use no art. <laughs> Mad, let us grant him then. And now remains that we find the cause of this effect. I have a daughter, well, have while she is mine, <laughs> who in her duty and obedience, Mark, hath given me this. Come, gather and surmise. <clears throat> to the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. Came this from Hamlet to her. Oh, pray, madam, stay a while. I will be faithful. <clears throat> Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar. But never doubt I love. Oh, dear Ophelia, I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best. Oh, most best. Believe it. Adieu. Thine evermore, most dear lady, Hamlet. <laughs> This, in her obedience, hath my daughter shown me. Do you think tis this? It may be very likely. Well, how shall we try it further? What do you think of me? Oh, as of a man honorable and faithful? I would fain prove so. But what might you think? If I looked upon this love with idle sight, what might you think? No. I went round to work, and my young mistress, thus I did bespeak. Prince Hamlet is a prince out of thy star, this cannot be. And then I these few precepts gave her, that she should lock herself from his resort, uh, admit no messengers, receive no tokens, which done, she took the fruits of my advice, and he repulsed, a short tale to make, fell into a sadness, then into a fast, thence into a, a lightness, and by this declension into the madness wherein now he raves. 
and all we mourn for. Could it be this? It may be. Well, how shall we try it? <clears throat> you know sometimes he walks together four hours here in the lobby. So he does, indeed. Mm -hmm. At such a time, I'll loose my daughter to him, be you and I behind the throne, mark the encounter. <laughs> we'll try it. Oh, oh, but look where sadly the poor wretch comes. Madam, I, I pray you, will you leave us here? I, with all my heart. Oh. Ophelia, walk you here. Your grace, we will bestow ourselves. Withdraw, my lord! Soft you now, the fair Ophelia, nymph. In thy orison be all my sins remembered. But my lord, how does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well. <laughs> my lord, I have remembrances of yours that I've long longed to redeliver. I pray you now receive them. No. Not I, I never gave you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did. And with them, words of so sweet breath composed to make the things more rich. Their perfume lost. Take these again, for to a noble mind rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Ha! Are you honest? My lord. Are you fair? What means, your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? Aye! Truly, for the power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a bard than the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness. I did love you. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent on this, but yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better. My mother had not borne me. We are errant knaves all. Believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Your father? At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell! Oh, help him, you sweet heavens! If thou dost, Mary, I'll give ye thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape calumny. Get thee to a nunnery. Farewell. Ah, if thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool, for wise men know very well what monsters you make of them <sighs> to a nunnery go and quickly tell oh heavenly powers restore him go to our no more it hath made me mad. I say, we will have no more marriages! 
those that are married already, all but one shall live. The rest <laughs> shall keep us to your to a nunnery. Go! of the fair state, the observed of all observers quite, quite down. And I, of ladies most deject and wretched, had sucked the honey of his music vows, now see the noble and most sovereign reason blasted with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me to have seen what I've seen. See what I see! Love. His affections do not that way tend, nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul over which his melancholy sits on brood, and I do guess the hatch and disclose will be some danger. We'll send him with speed to England for the demand of our neglected tribute. What think you on it? To England, send him. <laughs> or confine him where your wisdom best shall think. Oh, see where he comes. I do beseech you, away. I'll board him presently. Leave me be. Uh, how does my good lord Hamlet? Well, God of mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Fool, excellent! Well, you are a fishmonger. <laughs> Not I, my lord. Oh, that I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord. Honest, sir, in this world is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's very true, my lord. <laughs> Have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. For conception is a blessing, but as your daughter may conceive, friend, look to it. Still harping on my daughter? What say you by that? What do you read, my lord? Words, words, <laughs> words. Uh, what is the matter, my lord? Between who? <laughs> I mean, the matter that you read, my lord. Slanders, sir. The satirical rogue here says that old men have gray beards, that their faces are wrinkled, their eyes purging thick, and that they have a most plentiful lack of wit, or together with most weak halves. Yourself, sir, shall grow old as I am, if, like a crab, you could go backwards. Though this be madness, yet there is a method in it. My lord, will you walk out of the air? Into my grave. Oh, indeed, that's out of the air. How pregnant his replies are sometimes. <laughs> my lord, I will take my leave of you. Oh, you cannot take from me anything that I will not more willingly part with all. Except my life. Except my life. Except my life! Fare you well, my lord. These tedious old fools. You go to seek the Lord Hamlet. There he is. God save you, sir. <clears throat> my honored lord. My most dear lord. My excellent good friend. How does thou? Guildenstern. <laughs> Rosencrantz. 
Oh, what have you, good friends, deserved at the hand of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? <laughs> prison, my lord? Denmark's a prison. Oh, uh, we think not so. Why then, tis none to you. For there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To me, it is a prison. But what make you at Elsinore? Ah, uh, to visit you, my lord, no other occasion. Oh, well, were you not sent for? Is it your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come, deal justly with me. Come, come, nay, speak. Uh, uh, what should we say, my lord? Anything but to the purpose I know the good king and queen have sent for you. Uh, to what end, my oh, lord? that you must teach me. My lord, we were sent for. Uh, and I will tell you why. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth. And indeed, it goes so heavy with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. And this most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave or hanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with gold and fire, why, it appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man how noble in reason, how infinite in faculties, in form and moving, how express and admirable in action, how like an angel in apprehension, how like a god, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. But yet to me, what is this quintessence of Dust. Man delights, not me. <laughs> no, no woman neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. Oh, my lord, there was no such stuff in my thoughts. <laughs> Why did you laugh then when I said man delights not me? Uh, to think, my lord, if man delights not in you, what Lenten entertainment the players shall receive from you. Yeah, we coated them on the way and hither are coming to offer you service. What players are they? Well, even those you were wont to take delight in. The tragedians of the city. Ah! Gentlemen, you are welcome to Elsinore, but my uncle, father, and aunt, mother are deceived. In what, my lord? I am but mad north northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. Ah. Oh, well be with you, gentlemen. I prophesy he comes to tell me of the players. <laughs> my lord, I have news to tell you. The actors are come hither. Buzz, buzz. Uh, uh, the best actors in the world. You are welcome. <laughs> Well, welcome, friends. Oh, <laughs> we'll have a speech straight. Come, give us a taste of your quality. Come, a passionate speech. What speech, my lord? Hmm, I heard thee tell me a speech once. Twas Aeneas' tale to Dido, where he speaks of Priam's slaughter. If it live in your memory, begin at this line. Let me see. Let me see. The rugged... Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the night resemble with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish Pyrrhus, old grandsire Priam seeks. So proceed you. Well spoken, Lord, with good accent, good discretion. <laughs> <clears throat> Anon, he finds him, striking too wide at Greeks, unequal matched. Pyrrhus at Priam drives, in rage strikes wide. But with the whiffed in wind of his felled sword, the unnerved father falls. But lo, his sword, which was descending on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. And so, as a painted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood, and like a neutral to his will and matter, 
did nothing. But as we often see before some storm, a silence in the heavens, so after Pyrrhus paused, a roused vengeance sets him new a work, and never did the Cyclops' hammers fall with less remorse than Pyrrhus' bleeding sword now falls on Priam. Uh, this is too long. Say on. Come to Hecuba. But who, who, oh, who had seen the Mobled Queen run barefoot up and down, and for a robe, a blanket, in the alarm of fear caught up? But if the gods themselves did see her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport by mincing with his sword a husband's limbs, the instant burst of clamor that she made would have made milch the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods. Look if he has not turned his color and has tears in his eyes. Pretty no more. Tis well. I'll have thee speak out the rest. <laughs> Good my lord, will you see the players well bestowed? Do you hear? Let them be well used, for they are the abstract and the brief chronicles of the time. <laughs> After your death, you had better have a bad epitaph than their ill report whilst you live. <laughs> Good lord, I will use them according to their desert. Oh, God's bodkin, man, much better. Use every man after his desert, and who should scape whipping? Use them after your own honor. And dignity. Take them in. Come, sirs. Follow him, friends. We'll have a play tomorrow. Dost thou hear me, old friend? Canst thou play the murder of Gonzago? Aye, my lord. Very well. We'll have tomorrow night. Uh, you could for a need, study a speech of some dozen or sixteen lines, which I will set down and insert in, could you not? Oh, I, my lord. Very well. <laughs> Follow that lord, and look you, mock <clears throat> him not. <laughs> now, I am alone. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. It's not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit, tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice, and all for nothing. For Hecuba, what's Hecuba to he or he to Hecuba that he should weep for her? What would he do had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? Why, he would drown the stage with tears, confound the ignorant, and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull and muddy meddled rascal, peak and can say nothing. Um, I, a coward, for I am pigeon-livered and lack gall. Oh, bloody, bloody villain, remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindless villain! Oh, vengeance! Oh, what an ass am I? <laughs> Oh, this is most brave. Fire! Fire on fire! About my brain. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have, by the very cunning of the scene, been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father. 
before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tempt him to the quick if he do flinch. I know my course. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. And can you by no drift of circumstance get from him why he puts on this confusion? He does confess he feels himself distracted, but from what cause he will by no means speak. Did you assay him to any pastime? Oh, madam, it so fell out that certain players were overwrought on the way. Of these we told him, and there did seem a kind of joy to hear of it. They are about the court, and, as I think, have already ordered this night to play before him. Yes. And they did beseech me to entreat your majesties to see and hear the matter. With all my heart. And it doth content me much to hear him so inclined. <laughs> Good gentlemen, give him further edge. And draw his purposes on to these delights. <laughs> uh, we shall, my lord. My lord, do as you please. But if you hold it fit, after the play, let his queen mother all alone entreat him to show his grief. I will be placed, so please you, in the ear of all their conference. It shall be so, for madness and great ones must not unwatched go. There is a play tonight before the king, one scene of it comes near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. I prithee, when thou seest this act afoot, observe mine uncle. If his occulted guilt do not itself unkennel in one speech, it is a damned ghost that we have seen. Give him heedful note. Well, my lord. Oh, they are coming to the play. I must be idle. Get you a place. How fares our cousin Hamlet? Excellent of faith of the chameleon's dish. I eat the air. I have no answer with this Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, nor mine now. Be the players ready. Aye, your lord. Uh... So they wait upon your patience. Ah, come hither, Hamlet. Sit by me. Oh, no, good mother. He is metal more attractive. Mark that. Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I mean my head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. Do you think I meant country matters? I think nothing, my lord. Well, that's a fair thought to lie between a maid's legs. What is, my lord? <laughs> nothing. You are merry, my lord. Who I? <laughs> I, my lord. What's a man to do but be merry? Why, look you, how cheerfully my mother looks, and my father died within these two hours. <laughs> Nay, tis twice two months, my lord. So long? Oh, heavens, died two months ago and not forgotten yet. Why, there's hope a great man's memory might outlive his life half a year. <laughs> Thirty dozen moons with borrowed sheen About the world have times twelve thirties been Since love our hearts and hymen did our hands Unite commutual in most sacred band So many journeys made a sun 
and moon make us again count or our love be done. But woe is me. You are so sick of late, so far from cheer and from your former state. <coughs> Faith, I must leave thee, love, and shortly too. My apparent powers their functions leave to do. And thou shalt live in this fair world behind, beloved, honored, and haply one is kind. For husband shalt thou... Oh, confound the rest. Such love must needs be treason in my breast. In second husband, let me be accursed. None wed the second, but who killed the first. Wormwood. I do believe you think what now you speak, but what we do determine off we break. So think thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Both here and hence pursue me lasting strife. If once a widow, ever I be wife. If she should break it now. Tis deeply sworn. Sweet, leave me here a while. My spirits grow dull and fain I would beguile the tedious day with sleep. Sleep, rock thy brain, and never come mischance between us twain. Madam, how like you this play? The lady protests too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offence in it? Oh, no, no, they do but jest, poison in jest. No offence in the world. What do you call the play? The Mouse Trap. Oh, you shall see anon, tis a knavish piece of work. But what of that? Your Majesty and we that are of free souls, it touches us not. Ooh, this is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. Thoughts black, hands apt, drugs fit. And time agree. Confederate season, else no creature seen. Thy mixture rank of midnight weeds collected, with Hecate's bane thrice blasted, thrice infected. Thy natural magic and dire property, unwholesome life, usurp. Immediately! What <laughs> frighted with those fire? How fares my lord? Give me some light! Away! Away! Light! Away! Away! I need to have him. I'm not just fine. Tell him. Oh. Good. Horatio. I'll take the ghost word for a thousand pounds, this perceive! Very well, my lord. Upon the talk of the poison. Oh, I did very well note him. Sir, vouchsafe me a word with you, my lord. Sir, a whole history. The king, sir, I, is... I, sir, what of him? Is in his retirement marvellous distempered. With drink, sir. No, my lord, rather with collar. Your um, wisdom would show itself more richer to signify this to his doctor. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, hath sent me to you. Oh, you're welcome. If it shall please you to do me a wholesome answer... I shall do your mother's bidding. If not, your pardon and my return shall be the end of my business. Sir, I cannot. What, my lord? 
make you a wholesome answer. My wit's diseased. But to the matter, my mother, you say. She desires to speak with you in her closet ere you go to bed. We shall obey, were she ten times our mother. Have you any further trade with us? My lord, you once did love me. And you still buy these pickers and stealers? Oh, good, my lord. What is the cause of your distemper? Sir! I lack advancement. How can that be when you have the voice of the king himself for your succession in Denmark? Oh, the recorders! Let me see one. Let me see one. Will you play upon this pipe? My lord, I cannot. Mm. I pray you. Believe me, I cannot. Oh, I do beseech you. I know no touch of it, my lord. It's as easy as lying. Look, these are the stars. I have not the skill. Why, look you, how unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play upon me. You would seem to know my stops. Do you think I am easier to be played on than a pipe? God bless you, sir. My lord, the queen would speak with you, and presently. Do you see yonder cloud that's almost in shape of a camel? By the mass, it's like a camel indeed. Yes, methinks it's like a weasel. It is back like a weasel. Or like a whale? Very like a whale. Oh, then I will come to my mother by and by. I will say so. By and by is easily said. Leave me! Friends. Now is the very witching time of night when churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. No. Could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look on? Soft. Now to my mother. Let me be cruel. Not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. smells to heaven. It hath the primal eldest curse upon it, a brother's blood. Pray, can I not? Though inclination be as sharp as will, my stronger guilt defeats my strong intent, and like a man to double business bound, I stand and pause where I shall first begin and both neglect. What if my hand were thicker than itself with brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? Oh, but what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me my foul murder. <laughs> that cannot be, since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, my own ambition, and my queen. Can one be pardoned and still retain the offense? Try what repentance can. What can it not? Yet what can it when one cannot repent? O oh, wretched state! O oh, bosom black as death! O oh, limed soul that struggling to be free art more engaged! Help, angels! Make a say! Stubborn knees and heart with strings of steel, be soft as sinews of the newborn babe. All may be well. No. 
now might I do it? Pat, now he is a praying, and now I'll do it. And so he goes to heaven, and so am I revenged. That would be scanned. A villain kills my father, and for that I, his whole son, do this same villain send to heaven? Oh, this is hire and salary, not revenge. No, up sword, and know thou a more horrid hent when he is drunk, asleep, or in his rage, or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed. Then trip him, that his heels may kick at heaven, and his soul may be as damned and black as hell where to it goes. My mother stays. This physic but prolongs thy sickly days. My words fly up. My thoughts remain below. Words without thoughts never to heaven go. He will come straight. Look you, play home to him. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear with. Pray you, be round with him. I mother, you fear me not. Mother, Withdraw. Mother. He's coming. Withdraw. Now, mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Uh, mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet? What's the matter now? Have you forgot me? No, by the rude, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife, and would it were not so, you are my mother. Nay, then, I shall set those to you that can't speak. Come, come, and no. sit you down. No. You shall not burn. What? You go not what? till I have set you up at last, the... where you may see the inmost oh, oh, part of you. Oh, no, do that will not murder me. Help! 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 What help? Help! Help! help. help. A rat! Dead! Dead! Oh. What a duck it did! Oh. Oh. I am slain! No. Oh. Oh. oh, me! What hast thou done? Nay, I know not. Is it the king? Oh, what a rank and bloody deed is this! A bloody deed almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother! As kill a king? Aye, lady, twas my word! Oh, oh. oh thou wretched, rash, intruding fool! Oh. A farewell! I took thee for thy better! Take thy fortune! Thou finds to be too busy is some danger. Leave wringing of your hands. Please, sit you down. And let me wring your heart, for so I shall, if it be made of penetrable stuff. Oh, what have I done that thou darest wag thy tongue in noise so rude against me? Such an act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty. Look here, upon this picture, and on this, the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See, what a grace was seated on this brow. This was your husband. Look you now what follows. Here is your husband like a mildewed ear blasting his wholesome brother. What judgment would step from this to this? Oh, shame, where is thy blast? Oh, Hamlet, Hamlet, uh, speak to me no more. Thou turnst mine eye into my very soul, and there I see such black and grained thoughts as to leave there their taint. Nay. But to live in the rank sweat of an enseamed bed, stewed in corruption, honeying and making love oh. of a nasty stone. Oh, no more! 
thy words like daggers go in mine ears. Oh, sweet Hamlet, no more. A murderer and a villain, a cutpurse of the empire and the rule for, from a shelf the precious diadem had stolen, put it in his pocket. No, a king no. of shreds and patches. No more. Oh, save me. Another army with your wings, you heavenly gods. What would your gracious figure? Alack, he's mad. Do you not come, your tardy son, to chide the lapsed in time and passion? Let's go by the important acting of your oh. dread command. Oh, say! Do not forget! This visitation is but to whet thy almost blunted purpose! But look, amazement on thy mother sits. Oh, step between her and her fighting soul. Speak to her, Hamlet! How is with you, lady? Alas, how is it with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporal air do hold discourse? Oh, my gentle son, whereon do you look? On him! On him! Look, you how pale he glares! Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all, yet all it is I see. Then did you nothing here? No, nothing but ourselves. Oh, well, look, you, look where it goes, how it steals away, my father in Sabbath, as he lived. Look where he goes even now out of the portal. This is the very coinage of your brain. This bodiless creation ecstasy is very cutting in. Ecstasy? But this is not madness that I have uttered. Mother, for the love of grace, lay not that flattering unction into your soul that not your trespass but my madness speaks. Repent what is past. Avoid what is to come and do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. Oh, Hamlet, <laughs> Hamlet thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Oh, throw away the worse part of it. And live the purer with the other half. Oh, good night. I will go now to my uncle's bed. We refrain tonight. Assume a virtue if you have it not. And that shall lend a kind of easiness to the next abstinence. The next more easy. For the same Lord, I do repent. I shall bestow him and will answer well the death I gave him. I must be cruel, only to be kind. This bad begins and worse remains behind. One word more, good lady. What shall I do? Not this. By no means that I bid you let the bloat king tempt you again to bed and let him for a pair of reachy kisses make you ravel all this matter out that I am essentially not in madness, but mad in craft. Be thou assured. If words be made of breath and breath of life, I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. <gasps> I must to England, you know that. Alack, I had forgot. To so concluded on. There's letters sealed. And my two schoolfellows, whom I will trust as I will, adders fanged, do they do bear the mandate? They must sweep my way and marshal me to knavery. But let it work. This Man will set me packing. I'll lug the guts into the neighbor room. So, mother, good night indeed. This counselor is now most still, most secret, and most grave. Who was in life a foolish and a prating knave? Come, sir, to draw toward an end with you. Good night, mother.
There's matter in these sighs, these profound heaves. You must translate to fit we understand them. Where is your son? Oh, my good lord, what I have seen tonight. What, Gertrude? How does Hamlet? Mad as the sea and wind when both contend which is the mightier. In his lawless fit, hearing something stir behind the arras, cries out, a rat, a rat, and in this brainish apprehension kills the unseen good old man. Oh, oh heavy deed. It had been so with us had we been there. Oh, God. His liberty is full of threats to all, to you, yourself, to us, to everyone. Alas, how shall this deed be answered? Where is your son? Gone to draw apart the body he hath killed. Come, Gertrude. No sooner shall the mountains, no sooner shall the sun the mountains touch. But we will send him hence this vile deed. We must with all our majesty and skill both countenance and excuse. Ho! Gildenstern! Hamlet hath in madness Polonius slain. Go seek him out. Speak fair and bring the body into the chapel. I pray you, hasten this. Gertrude, we'll speak to whom our wisest friends we will, and tell them both what we mean to do and what's untimely done. Come, away. My soul is full of discord and dismay. Safely stowed. Hamlet! Oh, what what noise you call us on Hamlet? Oh, here they Lord. come. My lord, you must tell us where the body is and, and go with us to see the king. The body is with the king, but the king is not with the body. The king is a thing. A thing, my lord? Of nothing. Bring me to him. Hi, Fox, and all left It is dangerous that, that this man goes loose, yet I must not set the strong law on him. He is loved by the distracted multitude, who like not with their judgment, but with their eyes. Therefore, this sudden sending away must seem deliberate pause. How now? What has befallen? Where the body is bestowed, my lord, we cannot get from him. How now, Hamlet? Where's Polonius? At supper. At supper? Where? Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. A certain convocation of politic worms are in at him. Alas, alas. A man may fish with a worm that hath eat of a king, and eat of that fish that hath fed of that worm. <laughs> what dost thou mean by this? Well, nothing but to show you how a king may go a progress through the guts of a beggar. Where's Polonius? In heaven. Or oh, send hither to see if your messengers find him not there. Seek him in the other place yourself. But if indeed you find him not within this month, you shall nose him as you go up the stairs and into the lobby. Go seek him there. He will stay till you come. Hamlet, this deed must send thee hence. Therefore, prepare thyself. The bark is ready, the wind at help, the associates tend, and everything is bent for England. For England! Aye, Hamlet. Good. So it is, if thou knewest our purposes. Farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother, father and mother is man and wife, and man and wife is one flesh. So, my mother, come for England. Follow him at foot. Tempt him with speed abroad. Delay it not. I'll have him hence tonight. And England, if thou mayest not coldly set our sovereign process with imports at full, with letters congruent to the effect the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England! For like the hectic in my blood, he rages, and thou must cure me till it be done. Howe'er my haps, my joys were ne'er begun. <laughs>
Why, how now, Ophelia? He is dead and gone, lady. He is dead and gone. At his head a grass green turf. At his heels a stone. Alas, sweet lady, what imparts this Pray song? you, mark! White his shroud as the mouth tin snow. Alas, look here, good lord. Larded with sweet flowers, which be wept to the grave, did go with true love's showers. How do you, pretty lady? Well, God yield you. Lord, we know what we are, but we know not what we may be. God be at your table. Conceit upon her father. Pray you, let's have no words of this. But when they ask you what it means, say you this. Tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day, and all in the morning be time, and I, a maid at your window no, no, to no. be <laughs> your valentine. Then up he rose and donned his clothes and ducked the chamber door. Let in the maid that out of me never departed more. <laughs> How long has she been thus? I hope all will be well. We must be patient. I cannot help but choose to weep, to think they lay him in the cold ground. Oh, my brother shall know of this. And so I thank you for your good counsel. Come. My coach. Good night, ladies. Good night. Sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. Follow her close. Give her good watch, I pray you. Oh, this is the poison of deep grief. <laughs> It springs all from her father's death. Gertrude. Gertrude, when sorrows come, they come not single spies, but in battalions. First, her father slain. Next, your son gone. And he the most violent author of his own just remove. The people muddied, thick and unwholesome in their thoughts and whispers for good Polonius' death. Poor Ophelia divided from herself and her fair judgment, and last, and as containing much as all of these, her brother is in secret come from France. Where is shall be king? Where is he shall be king? Laertes Alack, shall be what noise is this? Oh, save yourself, my lord. Young Laertes in a riotous head <laughs> overbears your officers. The, the rabble call it more. They cry, choose we, Laertes shall be king. The doors are broke. Oh, thou vile king, give me my father. No, 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 no to stay. Calm yourself, Laertes. That drop of blood that's calm proclaims me bastard. No. Christ cuckold to my father. Good Laertes. Why is it your rebellion should look so giant-like? Let him go, Gertrude. Do not fear our person. Tell me, Laertes, why art thou thus incensed? Let him go, Gertrude. Speak, man. Where's my father? Dead. But not by him. Let him demand his fill. How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with. Let come what comes. Only I'll be revenged most thoroughly for my father. Laertes, if you must know the certainty of your father's death, 
Is it writ in your revenge that swoopstake you will draw both friend and foe? None but his enemies. Will you know them then? To his good friends thus wide I'd ope my arms. Well, now you speak like a good child and a true gentleman. That I am guiltless of your father's death and am most sensibly in grief for it shall as level to... How now, what noise is that? Dead and gone. Uh, uh, dear maid, <laughs> kind sister, sweet God. Ophelia. Oh, heavens, is this possible? A young maid's wits be as mortal as an old man's life? They bore him bare face on the bier, and in his grave rained many a tear. Fare you well, my dove. Hadst thou thy wits and didst persuade revenge and could not move thus. There's Rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray you, love, remember. There's pansies. That's for thoughts. A document in madness, thoughts and remembrance fitted. There's fennel and columbines for you. <laughs> There's rue for you, and there's some for me. Oh, you must wear your rue with a difference! There's a daisy. I would have given you violets, but they withered all when my father died. They say he made a good end. For bonny sweet Robin is all my joy. Thoughts and afflictions, passion, hell itself, she turns to favor and to prettiness. And will he not come again? Will he not come again? No! No, he is dead! Go to thy deathbed! He will never come again. God have mercy on his soul. God be with you. <laughs> now, Laertes, you must let me commune with your grief or you deny me right. Go but apart. Make choice of whom your wisest friends you will, and they shall hear and judge twixt you and me. If by direct or by collateral hand they find us touched, I will our kingdom give, our crown, and all that we call ours to you in satisfaction. But if not, be you content to lend your patience to us, and we will jointly labor with your soul to give it due content. Let this be so. His mean of death, his obscure burial, cry to be heard as twere from heaven to earth that I must call it in question. So you shall. And where the offense is, let the great axe fall. Come, go with me. <laughs> I didn't bless thee too. There's a letter for you. It comes from the ambassador that was bound for England. If your name be uh, Horatio, as I am let to know it is. Horatio, when thou shalt have overlooked this, give this fellow some means to the king. They have letters for him. Ere we were two days old at sea, a pirate of very warlike appointment gave us chase, and I alone became their prisoner. They have dealt with me like thieves of mercy, but they know what they did. I am to do a good turn for them. Let the king have the letters I have sent, and repair thou to me. This good fellow will bring thee to where I am. Of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern I have much to tell thee. Farewell. He that thou knowest thine, Hamlet. Come, I will make you away for these letters, and do it the speedier, that you may direct me to he from whom you brought them. Now must you put me in your heart for friend, since you have heard, and with a knowing ear, 
that he whom that your noble father slain pursued my life. It well appears, but tell me why you proceeded not against these feats. For two reasons, which may to you seem unsinewed, but yet to me they are strong. The queen, his mother, lives almost by his looks. The other reason why to a public count I might not go is the great love the general gender bear him. And so have I, a noble father, lost a sister driven into desperate terms, but my revenge will come. You must not think that we are made of stuff so flat and dull that we will let our beard be shook with danger and call it pastime. Shortly shall you hear. I loved your father, and we love ourselves. And uh, how now? What's the matter? Um, letters, my lord, from Hamlet. This to your majesty, and this to the queen. From Hamlet? Who brought them? No, sailors, they say. I saw them not. They were given me by Horatio. Laertes, you shall hear these. Leave us. High and mighty, you shall know I am set naked on your kingdom. Tomorrow shall I beg leave to see your kingly eyes, when I shall first, asking your pardon, thereunto recount the occasion of my sudden and more strange return. Hamlet, can this be? Are all the rest come back? Or is this some abuse and no such thing? Know you the hand? It is Hamlet's character, naked. And in the postscript here, he says alone. Can you advise me? I'm lost in it, my lord, but let him come. It warms the very sickness in mine heart that I shall live and tell him to his teeth, thus diest thou. If this be so, Laertes, will you be ruled by me? Aye, my lord, so you will not overrule me to a peace. To thine own peace. I have an exploit, now ripe in my device, under the which he may not choose but fall. And for his death, no wind of blame shall breathe, but even his mother shall call it accident. You have been talked of since your travel much, and in Hamlet's hearing for a quality wherein they say you shine. What part is that, my lord? For art, an exercise in your defense, and for your rapier most especial. T'was cried out, t'would be a sight indeed if one could match you. Now, this did Hamlet so envenom in his envy that he could nothing do but wish and beg your sudden coming over to play with him. Now out of this. What out of this, my lord? Laertes, did you love your father? Or are you like the painting of a sorrow, a face without a heart? Why ask you this? Hamlet comes back. What would you do to prove yourself your father's son in deed more than in words? To cut his throat in the church. Hamlet returned shall know you are come back. We'll put you in fine together and wager over your heads. He being remiss will not peruse the foil so that with shuffling or with a little ease, you may choose a sword unbated and in a passive practice Requite him for your father. I will do't, and for this purpose I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction of a mountbank so mortal that but dip a knife in it where the thing draws blood, no cataplasm so rare can save the thing from death that is but scratched withal. I'll dip my sword in this contagion that if I gall him slightly it may be death. If this should fail, twere better not assayed. Therefore this project should have a back or second. If it does not hold, if it should blast in proof. Soft, let me see. I have it. I'll have prepared a chalice for the nonce, whereupon but sipping, if he escaped your venom stuck, our purpose may hold there. How now, sweet queen? One woe doth tread upon another's heels so fast they follow. Your sisters drown, Laertes. And drown? Where? There is a willow grows a scant the brook that shows his hoary leaves to the glassy stream. Therewith, fantastic garlands did she make of crow flowers, daisies, nettles, and long purples. There, on the pendant boughs, her cornet weeds clamoring to hang, an envious sliver broke, when down her weedy trophies and herself fell into the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide. And mermaid like a while, they bore her up, but long it could not be till that her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch to her melodious death. Alas, then she is drowned. 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 Too much water hast thou, poor Ophelia, therefore I forbid my tears. Adieu, my lord, I have a speech of fire that fain would blaze, but I this. 
Folly drowns it. Let's follow Gertrude. How much I had to do to calm his rage, I fear this will give it start again. Therefore, let's follow. Did love, did love me, thought it was very sweet to contract at a time on my behalf. Me thought there was nothing to me. Has this fella no feeling of his business that he sings at grave making? Custom hath made it in him a property of easiness. Then time with its stealing steps have caught me in his clutch. And shit me down into the ground as if I had never been such. Well, that yeah, skull had a tongue in it and could sing once. Hey. Why, this may be the paint of a politician which oh, this kiddie, ass kiddie. all reaches. One that kiddie, could kiddie, circumvent kiddie. God, ah. might it not? It might, my lord. Or of a courtier who could, which could say a good morrow, oh, sweet lord. How dost thou, good lord? <laughs> uh, pick it. And a spade, a spade for an a shroud sheet, a pit of clay for to be made. For such a thing is me too. Ooh, there's another. <laughs> Why may not that be the skull of a lawyer? Oof, to have his fine pate full of fine dirt. I'll speak to this fellow. Whose grave is this, sirrah? Oh, uh, mine, sir. I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. Oh, <laughs> you do not lie in it, sir, and therefore it is not yours. But for my part, I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. <laughs> what man dost thou dig it for? Oh, for no man, sir. What woman, then? No woman either. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir. But rest us all, she's dead. How absolute the knave is. <laughs> How long have you been a grave maker? Oh, it was the very day young Hamlet was born. He that is mad and, and sent to England. Aye, Mary, uh, why was he sent to England? Because he was mad. Well, how came he mad? Uh, very strangely, they say. How strangely? Uh, faith eaten from losing his wits. Upon what ground? <laughs> Why, here in Denmark. <laughs> you know, I have been sexton here, man and boy, 30 years. How long will a man Ooh. lie in the earth ere he rot? Oh, uh, if faith, if he be not rotten before he die, <laughs> he'll last some eight or nine years. Why, here is a skull that has lain you in the earth some three and twenty years. Whose was it? A horse and mad fellows it was, sir. He was poured a flag and a Rhenish on my head. <laughs> this skull is the same skull as Yorick, the king's jester. This? Yeah, in that. Let me see. Yeah. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, a most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. He hung those lips that I have kissed, I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now, your gambols, your songs? Oh. But soft, but soft, here comes the king, the queen, the courtiers. Who is this they follow? Couch we a while yeah. and mark.
What ceremony else? That is Laertes, a very noble youth, Mark. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far enlarged as we have warranty. Her death was doubtful, and but the great command or sways the order, she shouldn't ground unsanctified be lodged. Yet here she is allowed her virgin grants, her maiden instruments, and the bringing home of bell and burial. Must no more else be done? No more be done. We should profane the service of the dead to sing sweet requiems and such to her as do peace part and soul. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violets spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. Martha, Ferrophilia, sweet to this sweet. Farewell. I hope thou shouldst have been my Hamlet. I thought thy bride bed to have decked, sweet maid, and not her strewn my grave. the earth a while till I've held her once more in mine arms. <laughs> oh, what is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? This is I, Hamlet the Dane. The devil take thy soul. <laughs> And that's a while the fit will work on him. Hear you, sir. What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever. But it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew and dog will have his dog. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We'll put the matter to a present push. Good Gertrude, set watch over your son. An hour of quiet shall we shortly see. Till then, in patience our proceedings be. fighting that would not let me sleep. There's a divinity that shapes our ends, rough you them how we will. That is most certain. Up from my cabin, in the dark, <laughs> groped I to find out Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, fingered their packet and in fine withdrew to mine own room again, making so bold my fear for getting manners to unseal their grand commission, where I found Horatio. A royal knavery, an exact command. My head should be struck off. Is it possible? Here's the commission. Read it. 
at more leisure. Wilt thou hear me how I did proceed? I beseech you. I sat me down, devised a new commission, wrote it fair, wilt thou know the effect of what I wrote? Aye, good, my lord. An earnest conjuration from the king. As England was his faithful tributary, that on the view and knowing of these contents, he should those bearers put to sudden death, not shriving time allowed. So Guildenstern and Rosencrantz go to it. Why, man, they did make love to this employment. Tis dangerous when the baser natures comes between the pass and fell incensed points of mighty opposites. Why, what a king is this? He that hath killed my king and whored my mother is not perfect conscience to quit him with this arm. It must be shortly known to him from England what is the issue of the business there. Uh, peace. Who comes here? Your lordship is right. Welcome back to Denmark. Oh, I humbly thank you, sir. Hmm. Sweet lord, if your lordship were at his leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. Ooh, I shall receive it with all diligence of spirit. Put your bonnet to its right use. It is for the head. I think, your lordship, it is very hot. No, believe me, it is very cold. The wind is northerly. It is indifferent cold, my lord, indeed. But yet, methinks it is very hot and sultry for my complexion. Exceedingly, my lord, it is very sultry. But, uh, my lord, his majesty bade me signify to you that he has laid a great wager on your head. Sir, this is the matter. I beseech I... you, remember. Sir, here's newly come to court. Laertes, believe me, an absolute gentleman. You are not ignorant to what excellence Laertes is. I dare not confess that, lest I compare with him in excellence. Oh, I mean, sir, for his weapon. What is his weapon? <laughs> Rapier and dagger. Well, that's two of his weapons, but... The right. king, sir, hath wagered with him six Barbary horses. The king hath laid, sir, that in a dozen passes between yourself and him, he shall not exceed you three hits. Mm. <clears throat> it would come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. If it please his majesty, it is the breathing time of day with me. Let the foils be brought, the gentleman willing, and the king hold his purpose. I'll win for him if I can. If not, I will gain nothing but my shame and the odd hits. I commend my duty to your lordship. Yours? <coughs> Yours? You will lose, my lord. I do not think so. Since he went into France, I have been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. But thou wouldst not think how ill all's here about my heart. But it is no matter. If your mind dislike anything, obey it. I will forestall their repair and, and, and say you are not fit. Not a wit. We defy augury. There's special providence in the fall of a sparrow. <coughs> if it be now, <coughs> it is not to come. 
if it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yes, it will come. The readiness is all. Let be! Come, Hamlet, take this hand from me. Give me your pardon, sir. I've done you wrong. But pardoned, as you are a gentleman, this presence knows, and you must needs have heard, how I am punished with sore distraction. I here proclaim what I have done was madness. Was Hamlet wronged Laertes? Never Hamlet. His madness is poor Hamlet's enemy. Free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot my arrow o'er the house and hurt my brother. I am satisfied in nature and do receive your offered love like love and will not wrong it. I embrace it freely, and will this brother's wager frankly play? Give us the foils. Come on. Come, one for me. Young Osric, give them the foils. <clears throat> Hamlet, you know the wager? Very well, my lord. Your grace hath laid the odds of the weaker side. I do not fear it. I have seen you both, but since he's bettered, we have, therefore, odds. Let me see. Uh, another, that's too heavy. This likes me well. These foils have all the length. Aye, my good lord. Set the stoops of wine on that table. The king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath, and in the cup an union shall he throw, richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Come, begin, and you, the judge, bear a wary eye. Stay. Give me the cup. Hamlet, this pearl is thine. To your health. Give him the cup. I'll play this bout first. Set it by a while. I do confess. Ha! Our son shall win. Here, Hamlet, take my napkin, wipe thy brow. The queen carouses to thy fortune, Hamlet. Good madam. Uh, Gertrude, do not drink. I will, my good lord, I pray you. Pardon me. It is the poison cup. It is too late. I dare not drink yet, madam. By and by. Come, let me wipe thy brow. My lord, I'll hit him now. I do not think it. It is against my conscience. Come, for a third. Laertes, you but dally, I pray you, pass with your best violence. Say you so. Come, sir.
Have at you now! To mine own spring, Chasric, I am justly killed with mine own treachery. Oh, that's the queen! She swoons to see them bleed. No. They no, only drink. They drink. I am I am only they drink. They drink. I am poisoned. <laughs> Thou art slain. No medicine in the world can do thee good. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbated and envenomed. Lo, the foul practice hath turned itself on me. Here I lie, never to rise again. Thy mother's poison. I can no more. Hamlet, the king, the king is to blame. The point. Envenomed, too. Then ran up to thy way. Oh, yet defend me. Oh, I am but her. Thou oh. incestuous, murderous, damned drink, drink oh. of this potion. Oh. Is there a union there? was a poison, tempered by himself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death come not upon me, nor thine on me. Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. I am dead to raise you, oh, a wretched queen, and you. <laughs> but let it be. Horatio, I am dead. <laughs> Thou live. Report me and my cause aright to the unsatisfied. Oh. I die, Horatio. 
The potent poison. Quite. Oh, crows my spirit. The rest is. Silence. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. And flights of angels sing thee to thy rest.